Okay, good morning, everybody from uh, sunny and warm Vancouver, Canada. Uh, thank you for joining. And uh, a few minutes late, uh, just to wait for a few more people to sign up. We have a nice crowd from uh, four continents. Uh, today, it's the last uh, uh, webinar seminar on advanced uh, diamond uh, gemology. So let's uh, start. Uh, you know who I am, Branko Deljani, director of Canadian Gemological Laboratory, and also uh, doing research and education last five years under uh, Branko Gems, uh, my gemological research industry Inc. Uh, company for specialized in this kind of education and programs. We also uh, writing books and collaborating with the uh, different uh, 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 researchers around the world. So you will see uh, today's presentation, approximately one hour, uh, what uh, uh, I did in, in uh, last few months uh, with my colleagues and what basically uh, I'm planning to do uh, next uh, few months uh, and with another book. So uh, thank you for those who sign up for Advanced Academy and uh, supporting this project. Uh, goal is to educate, uh, of course, uh, around the world and share information especially important in a time of uh, pandemic to, to be online and to, uh, to be connected. So we hope to re resume our workshops and shows in a few months. Uh, I am actually traveling tomorrow to uh, Serbia and Russia and visiting uh, families, but also doing some project in Europe uh, uh, on Opal. So it's interesting uh, time, uh, but it's, uh, this is what we have. So. Uh, for those uh, uh, who doesn't uh, know, who are first time here, I'm a geologist and also a, a gemologist from uh, American Institute uh, GIA and uh, British uh, FGA. Uh, what is nice uh, uh, for some of you uh, uh, to know that uh, I did uh, a special program uh, with the uh, University of Nantes, uh, University of Gemology Diploma in 2000, uh, 2001. And this is uh, something I would encourage uh, those who wants to do more uh, into uh, gemology uh, to take a special project and to study uh, in special at universities. So let me uh, just go to second slide. Uh, my computer is slow this morning. Uh, it needs to wake up uh, as well. Uh, so. Uh, with uh, Dusan Simic, uh, my colleague uh, from uh, uh, Serbia, but also who lives in New York, we did a nice uh, series of webinars uh, last uh, six months, actually. We did, uh, uh, believe it or not, 19 webinars as a part of these uh, education programs. And uh, these webinars, uh, we made a movie uh, to summarize all of these uh, webinars. Uh, you can see in a second that uh, will. Uh, uh, present uh, did present 19 speakers from uh, believe it or not 15 countries uh, and uh, those who sign up for academy they can download this movie uh, at no cost uh, we can see the link In, uh, on the right in um, Cyprus, and you can see uh, people from uh, six countries, including Greece and, and Cyprus, and uh, Ukraine, uh, Belgium, uh, Russia. So attending the workshop. And this is one group on the left from Australia that 40 people comes per day to learn uh, hands-on. Today, I will try in this case sample a diamond study to give you some feeling on these workshops, to give you some examples, and even show you uh, one or two small videos. So beside me, I uh, had a special guest who also co-author of, of the next book, like John Chapman did a lecture end of February on a principle of geological equipment for diamond origin ID. I did two lectures on the uh, comparison of portable instruments, a part of the 
a new book article and one special one on provenance and grading of pink diamonds so how to prove that uh, pink diamonds coming from argel australia or from other countries that another five six important uh, commercial deposits my colleague dushan simic uh, uh, supposed to be today uh, with me but unfortunately he had some uh, medical issue on the way back from serbia so he is resting so sorry about this that we announced him but uh, he will i'm sure he'll join us uh, in fall uh, seminars and webinars. Uh, he did a lecture on HPHT, high pressure, high temperature, and APHT, what is the atmospheric pressure temperature treatments of diamonds. These lectures we did together are free to download. You can go to this website, uh, brancogem.com shop uh, and advanced diamond academy. Five lectures are free and five uh, we charge uh, $39 per lecture. You can get the deal at 99 for three lectures, so 159 for five. And we basically uh, get all advanced diamond academy uh, lectures. What is nice, if you listen eight of them, and I, I can see that you're downloading or not, at the end, you can get a certificate. Uh, if you have to pass some uh, tests, it's not, uh, it, I take it very seriously. I'm creating these tests uh, as we speak this weekend, and then it, uh, it will be posted uh, for those who are part of Academy. So we have Victor Vince from uh, Russia, did a very nice lecture on color enhancement of natural laboratory grown diamonds from Siberia. I was in his effect, uh, no factory uh, facilities uh, to grow diamonds and do treatments in Novosibirsk, uh, Siberia. Then we have very special uh, guest from China, very rare that talking uh, in English in the Western world, Tejin Lu from the biggest laboratory, NGTC, talking about Chinese static diamonds, and Miko Astrom, uh, very important for advanced portable instruments in screening and ID. He talked about four instruments, a two hours lecture. This is the one I really uh, recommend for those who want to get instruments or, 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 or have instruments. And today you'll see some of them, uh, and I will show you some uh, spectra from uh, for these four instruments because this is a, we are collaborate with them a lot, and th these are good instruments for the portable advanced gemology. Then we have a more heavy spectroscopic uh, lectures from uh, uh, people that I learned uh, in the past, and uh, uh, probably those who do spectroscopy knows uh, this book uh, of handbook of uh, uh, industrial diamonds and diamond films, very thick. Uh, like an expensive book that has optical spectra in the four different instruments, five uh, on Dr. Sander Zaitsev from University of New York. Uh, last uh, lecture was uh, Thomas uh, Henschweig, uh, my colleague from uh, GGT Laboratory Switzerland, uh, who makes instruments, who's also uh, very uh, specialized in detection of color diamonds, treated diamonds, and of course, male synthetic diamonds. This is his specialty. And this is today, uh, I'm talking about case studies. So uh, next book, uh, coming early fall and those who want they can still order at 25 percent discount and it'll be shipping in september this is the book how it looks uh, it's more than halfway designed there's a lot of work but uh, uh, i think it's a very nice uh, uh, test uh, sorry textbook to be like a reference for everybody who involved in studying diamonds this is a goal uh, such a book doesn't exist on the market uh, as i know it's a lot of articles but not a book the summaries and I'm very proud that I was able over uh, 20 years to meet all these people, work with them. One of the first I met is 1999, Dr. Alan Collins, who helped me with my original research on high pressure, high temperature treatment of diamonds, who teaching in university, sorry, college uh, in London, now retired, King's College. He did a, a chapter of defects of natural treated laboratory grown diamonds. Uh, John Chapman uh, cover principles, uh, Zaitsev, Dr. Zaitsev, optical spectroscopy, and then I will talk about producers and the portable instruments. And today, uh, topic uh, it will be appendix on on 700 tests, believe it or not, on 11 instruments. A lot of work, as you can imagine. But this, those who want to really know how each instrument detect specific samples, everything is disclosed. And uh, people that I mentioned before, uh, Dr. Vic Vince and Dr. Henschmack, will talk about uh, diamond treatments and uh, testing with advanced instruments like a spectroscopy, fluorescence imaging, very special and expensive instruments. So let me go into my lecture and uh, we'll go uh, approximately one hour. And please, uh, on the bottom of your screen, you have a QA uh, button. You can always click it, ask a question. At the end, we'll have 20 to 30 minutes uh, time for you to ask me questions if you have. So uh, I'm trying to squeeze a lot in one hour, but it's not possible, of course. Uh, that's why out of 11, 12 instruments, I will present maybe five uh, more portable one, more uh, handy one that the jewelers needs, uh, uh, appraiser needs, any gemologist needs, because they're very useful if you know the, what to, how to use them. 
And in part two, I will talk more about advanced instruments based on visible photoluminescence, infrared spectroscopy, how to screen mounted and melee diamonds, what is more uh, complicated, and uh, give you the what many of you maybe need uh, some case samples, uh, stone by stone, on uh, not one but four instruments uh, that uh, I have access or I'm using here. So uh, this is a kind of uh, one of the summary slides uh, from my uh, chapter for the next book, uh, giving a little bit uh, uh, information that is coming up. But uh, basically, based on what I study, and for 20, 22 years, I'm working in three laboratories. I'll use a lot of instruments, as you can imagine. Also, I've seen many instruments at the shows and at the conferences. For example, at the last conference, uh, not last, 2018 in Montenegro, uh, the Beers brought the synth detect instrument and I could see how it works. So I didn't uh, disclose results of all instruments in my next book, but those that are in capital, uh, sorry, in bold letters, I did. And uh, um, the dose of the italic, uh, I did uh, know how they work and uh, uh, have a chance to use them, but didn't uh, study on my collection. So you can see the three type of groups of stones, uh, uh, sorry, groups of instruments. One based on transparency to short UV UV light. Uh, these are Stetitam screener, Ari, Vista, and other instruments. I've studied these three. Uh, then fluorescent for post-fluorescent reaction to long UV short UV. Uh, or other UV filtering technology. This is a PL jewelry inspector, gem pen, diatru, mini screen, and many others, but I studied those. And of course, there are many, many instruments from different producers on visible photoluminescence, Raman, infrared. Uh, but I studied those that are more under $10,000 just for a point to, to be more accessible in Spectrum uh, ID100 uh, and EXA. There are also other instruments you can see. Uh, of course, from Nicolette, I'm using IS10 here and uh, other uh, companies. Uh, there's one on time resolved photoluminescence. There's very, very short, uh, basically, phosphorescence of natural diamonds uh, could be detected with synth detect uh, by the beers. And uh, uh, very important final answer for, in some cases of supporting uh, fluorescence imaging and fluorescence spectroscopy, a diamond view and deep uh, UV uh, laser DFI. And of course, there are other techniques that uh, some people are uh, using, uh, but I didn't have a chance to, to get hold of it. Or, 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 or producer didn't want to borrow me. They don't disclose all the time, like Sherlock Holmes and many others, actually. There's over 50 instruments on the market uh, doing that. So I just use this table that you saw before from my other uh, workshops uh, to highlight these three categories and highlight what these three instruments are doing. You can see uh, this is a natural edge pitch grown CVD grown diamonds, three uh, ways to separate them, um, of course, based on. Uh, three type of uh, uh, characteristics. One is a uh, color of fluorescence and phosphorescence. You can see that uh, if diamond fluoresce natural, usually it's blue and this is maybe 30, 40% do this, could be yellow other colors, but long UV, if it's present, is always stronger or a little bit stronger than short UV. Uh, could be some phosphorescence, but uh, for short time, chameleon diamonds, that is another topic on cold diamond lecture that I uh, cover even in article gems and gemology, with Thomas uh, Henschwag and Dushan, uh, it's uh, also the, the phosphorus, but uh, they're still long UV stronger than short UV. Blue diamonds could also phosphorus red. And those who come to museums, uh, they can see these uh, rare uh, blue diamonds, type 2B. HPC grown, uh, very easy to separate them most of the time just based on good UV light, uh, UV lamp. I say good because it has to be good source, and the stronger the light, uh, the better. And in this case, we're not grading the fluorescence, we're just comparing long UV and short UV. And if short UV uh, stronger and phosphorescence, this is HPHT grown. Usually it could be up to one minute or longer. CVD grown, uh, not all the time uh, fluoresce. Uh, if it's uh, out of the grower, it's usually orange. And I was the first person uh, to disclose this in uh, 2002 when I got first stones in New York. Uh, this phosphor fluorescence orange was unusual. Short UV is slightly stronger or could be the same. This is very important. They're not so obvious as HPHT grown and they don't uh, phosphorus sometimes very rare for a few seconds after HPHT treatment. I cannot cover all these details today, but this is important to know that they could, but for short time. This is instruments uh, based on UV uh, transparency, sorry, UV fluorescence. Uh, on based on transparency, we're basically looking at the type of diamonds in a very simple uh, instrument form. 
Why? Because diamonds that do contain nitrogen, the type 1A, will not transmit uh, uh, short UV light. And rare type 2A, 2B diamonds, uh, which is maybe 2 to 3%, uh, will do. What is uh, important uh, so far, all commercial uh, diamonds in the market uh, that are coralless are 2A, uh, HPHT grown, or, or CVD grown. Uh, they could be also to be uh, bluish or blue or gray. And they will uh, also uh, be uh, transparent uh, to short UV light. And this instrument will, will show, uh, uh, basically, you will see later a sign uh, type 2A or CVD HPHT, uh, it's like referring them. And of course, there's a lot of colors of different diamonds that overlap, uh, uh, but sometimes uh, it's not possible to produce all colors uh, uh, synthetic. They never produce chameleon diamonds, for example, or some other uh, rare colors. And they need to do some treatments to do uh, colors like pink or, or, or green. So we're looking for impurities uh, with advanced instruments. Uh, nitrogen impurity is present in diamond, but uh, mostly as pairs, but could be single nitrogen, could be hydrogen, could be boron, uh, very rare nickel and other uh, little uh, impurities that sometimes uh, we can detect only with the very sensitive techniques. Uh, in diamond that are grown in a presses, a high pressure, high temperature, it's a single nitrogen diamond present. We're looking for that. If it's a lot, it's a, it's a yellow. If it's a little bit, it can still be uh, colorless. And we have a metal a catalyst, boron, sorry, nickel, iron, and cobalt. Boron is also could be there, become more blue. And in CVD, we're looking for very, very fine uh, concentration nitrogen, uh, but more important, silicon defect, uh, silicon vacancy. And hydrogen is present a lot because it's they're growing from the gas. This is from graphite, and this is source of carbon uh, natural, of course. As a gemologist, we always look at the loop and microscope inclusions, but uh, believe it or not, uh, now they're making more than 70% of diamonds are VS and higher. And I see it every week here and uh, not possible to separate with the loop and microscope if it's a little crystal, natural or, or, or synthetic origin. Uh, this is an old slide that I'm changing every year or two because uh, these, uh, they're growing bigger, bigger diamonds every year. Uh, used to be one carat, two carat, three carats. Now it's common to have a five carat, six carat diamonds. Even here I'm getting, uh, these diamonds uh, weekly, but they can be as big as 20 carat I've seen HPHT grown. I studied 10 carat uh, uh, coralless diamonds. CVD uh, now majority of them are uh, bigger uh, than four, five, six carats. And uh, as a rule, HPHT grown are usually melee diamonds and up to one carat, carat and half commercially and CVD could be bigger and they're not uh, available as melee, sometimes very rare. So it's important to screen them. And what we do, I will start from simple instruments because uh, this is the way uh, to go, but these instruments are so powerful, even simple instruments, if you know how to use them. This is my most popular workshop for 10, 10 years. Uh, sometimes I just do three hours of this workshop and people say, wow, I, I can now really screen my diamonds. How? With two polarized filters, uh, analyzer and, and, and polarizer and light source. Uh, you can put on the microscope like this. This is a geological microscope, of course, could be other microscopes more stronger that use it at universities. Or uh, I like this little portable uh, polariscope uh, that I uh, use, uh, give uh, my students, and they can just look under under microscope and see different patterns. It has to be in a cross position, means at 90 degrees. This is how it looks, dark, dark uh, field. Sorry, dark position, not open like this. And then uh, we look at the pattern. Uh, this is very important uh, to know that this is 3D effect. You have to rotate the stone around, not only one position and pattern is changing. It's called anomalous double refraction because even diamond is singly refractive in different uh, directions, the different light is traveling a little bit different. Also called uh, by uh, cutters and people strain or some stress or more geologically body fridges uh, because it's a little bit different. Uh, it's very settled, very fine in type 2A diamonds. This is tatami here or very strong, not always like this, but this is one of the stones from Argyll, Australia, bigger source that just closed last year type one diamond. This is something very obvious, of course, but sometimes it's much more uh, settled. Uh, this is uh, very common on the market, uh, very commercially important. We call it cape diamonds. Why cape? Because the type 1A usually has a bluish fl fluorescence and usually have yellowish tint. Could be HK, any color, uh, basically even high color. And uh, pattern is not so strong. You have to rotate the stone. This is four position. You can see this kind of, we call it, uh, Mindushan create this booklet. Uh, uh, best-selling booklet on uh, cross-polarized filters to screen uh, synthetic and, and, and natural diamonds. And uh, 
you can see uh, how pattern changing and this is a little bit bluish coming through grayish uh, brownish this is a uh, still natural diamond we can always double check this with fluorescence i would encourage always to back up with fluorescence and spectroscopy any test you do but this is an example of that from our one of our workshop uh, this is a synthetic diamond grown by hpht high pressure high temperature technology two-way g color in infrared there is no nitrogen present in this is uh, one final region of course this is easy one because it has a metallic inclusion here even if you pick up with a strong magnet uh, s1 s2 stone lower could be picked up but no strain no stress because it's very young diamond grown in a day or two uh, uh, in a laboratory so that's why uh, very very small or almost no stress a little bit different in cvd grown diamond this is one uh, from china and uh, uh, joe was my yuan was my speaker at the first conference in greece 2015 on this topic uh, this is from china i found similar in stones that i studied from america or from other sources uh, they're growing now in india a lot of course russia everywhere israel i was in factory in israel who growing this diamond just two years ago you can see a pattern if you see something like this you're dealing with cvd very strong parallel pattern to the table sometimes it's not so easy because this is like a little bit of tangle a crossing uh, so could look similar or not exactly the same like natural diamond for some people especially when they do hpht treatment uh, internal pattern change and i cannot talk about too much about this but in the latest book with dushan uh, dushan did great pictures of nine stones eight of them hpht treated and pattern is is crossed like this and one of them is uh, as grown not treated and pattern parallel to the table so it's possible to do a lot with the simple instruments uh, this is hundred dollars investment with these cross polarized filters and find out a lot about your diamond of course fluorescence is the second most important or first uh, i always check uh, diamond with fluorescence uh, in screening of diamonds why because if you have a necklace or bracelet like this this is how is what, what you would expect if somebody put natural diamonds in your uh, bracelet some diamonds don't fluoresce or it's a uh, weak blue or medium or strong or very strong under long UV and, and under short UV, weaker. It's opposite for synthetic diamonds, if they're, especially if they're, when they're small, uh, HPHT grown, short UV is stronger. This is something uh, I want to emphasize again. And very different if diamond is uh, treated or, or synthetic treated. This is a case of this CVD grown that they post treated uh, to make it uh, pink. And this is just under long UV light uh, on the left and short UV light. You can see how it's very different fluorescence, strong orange or strong red of HPHT grown and CVD grown and uh, natural agar, uh, many other stones from other uh, countries, will fluoresce weak to medium, usually medium to strong blue on the long UV and one degree weaker on the short UV. This is very typical for argyle stones, for example. And this is a slide uh, very important for those who wants to connect fluorescence and spectroscopy. And this is where we are now a little bit introducing spectroscopy. Why? Because when diamond is excited with the, with, with the light, uh, depends what kind of light, of course, uh, could be uh, visible light, could be uh, different uh, lasers, could be uh, cut uh, electrons, cut luminescence. It will show some, some fluorescence emission of light. And this is a color usually associated with this, uh, we call entry or, or cape lines, entry very strong, and then other lines are called cape lines. And this is a mostly a sign the stone is a, a natural. Uh, of course, could be still coated, could be fracture filled, other treatments. I'm not talking about this today, not enough time. But still, uh, we, we know it's not, not synthetic diamond if it's such a strong, nice spectra like this. H3 center and other uh, sidebands causing more greenish yellow, yellowish green fluorescence. And now it could be stone could be treated, uh, uh, 503, 496. Uh, could be natural, still uh, natural heat uh, exposed. Uh, so you need some more testing. But this is something we can see, obviously, uh, as a color. And fluorescence envy center is uh, 575, starting from here to 637. And we said minus is 637. This is associated usually with the radiation and annealing. Uh, also, this center could be present in any diamond, basically, but with very sensitive instruments uh, to check. Uh, and other centers, of course, there's, this is just visible range. There's many other defects in infrared beyond the red, uh, 700 nanometer plus, and UV area is below 400. Many other instrument checking UV area and, of course, infrared is just a visible uh, part of the spectrum. And now I want to show you some case samples because uh, this is all about this, uh, what we are doing with these instruments, what uh, results we are getting, and uh, how you can use it in your daily uh, geological work. Uh, in the next book, uh, believe it or not, I'm covering each stone with 11 instruments. It's a very busy table. But now I'm just covering you what 
I would do in a CGL lab, if I have a stone that is yellow, blue, and this is two of them colorless. Of course, uh, I always look at the stone from point of quality, assign color and clarity, have idea about color cut, uh, give you some idea about uh, stone. And then this is at the end, of course, what is origin producer that I found out only uh, in this case is the Chatham because uh, they gave us eight stones uh, for study and we are just disclosing four here. And sometimes uh, a stone is, uh, even if VS2 has a small metallic inclusions, uh, but very important to do highest, highest magnification and check origin of inclusions. In this case, for essence, you can see long UV is non and short UV is big, green, yellow, very important. Stronger, and actually, in many cases, in this case, just these two tests will tell you stone is synthetic. Of course, I can put on the cross polarized filters and prove no pattern, short UV stronger, metallic inclusions, case closed. Three tests is enough, sometimes two, but three is the best. Then I can also do, of course, infrared and see this is a stone that is, has a lot of single nitrogen, what is uh, very rare in natural diamond, but still possible, maybe less than 1%. And here's this uh, combination of these uh, A ag aggregate, aggregates, what is two nitrogen atoms, and visible pillar spectra does uh, maybe support, but just giving us additional information. Next stone. Next stone, it was a uh, blue diamond, very expensive if it's natural, uh, fancy blue VS2, very expensive even if it's uh, a third of the carat. Uh, also have a small uh, crystal, which is good. Uh, this is important that this stone has a medium yellowish green uh, short tube fluorescence and phosphorescence more than a minute. This is something that give away, uh, uh, this is not a natural diamond and no pattern. In this case, we also have additional bands in a photoluminescence invisible. Uh, this is a, a interesting, now D color. So they can grow D color uh, with HPHT. Uh, Actually, higher color are grown by HPHT than CVD. CVD usually needs a post treatment to make DEF, uh, but uh, HPHT process can grow a high color. Also, has small crystals, uh, and this is also has a faint yellowish green uh, short UV uh, uh, fluorescence, no pattern. Very important type 2A, so it's another uh, way to, to prove the synthetic. Everything fits together, it is laboratory grown by Chatham. And the last one of a CVD uh that uh, has a small cloud so the clouds are not very uh, uh detectable it could be natural cloud difficult and this is the tricky because it has very weak uh, orange and weak orange and, and this is really under good uv light that you can make a picture and compare uh, so some people can miss this as, or say oh it's both weak or both same intensity yes and pattern is very typical for two-way pattern like a parallel pattern but Again, this is not final answer because type 2 a natural diamond could have this pattern. We prove it's type 2A. And this is in this case of CVD, final answer is really spectroscopy. That's why I want to show you the steps. So I wouldn't be, base my conclusion based on these three tests. I would always do spectroscopy and prove, oh, 575 MV center is there. And that's it. Small but present 737. This is the room temperature small. If you do cool it down, you can make a, this a, a pattern much stronger, of course. And before I, I go here, uh, I just want to show you one of these instruments, a uh, simple one, because this is a basically a summary uh, in one slide. Sorry, so busy, but uh, of uh, 12 instruments uh, I tested over a year, because it takes a lot of time and uh, I do other things as well, not just uh, one article. So you can see here, it goes from 525. Uh, this is actually a correction here. This was all the course. It's around 7,800 euros, this instrument, uh, EXA. So now it's almost more than $9,000 US uh, for this first row. And this one is more for jewelry uh, called J Mini, uh, J Smart uh, from DRC. Uh, it's very good for big trade, for manufacturers of jewelry. It's $22,000, this one, a small mini one. And I have it here. It's good. You can put five uh, items uh, at the time. It's portable and uh, you can see you can put it here in the tray and it's uh, simple to carry. Uh, give you a nice uh, fast uh, digital image of the jewelry i'll explain uh, not all of this because i choose maybe uh, to do uh, i don't carry uh, these instruments uh, gaa uh, di di diet through and vista they possible to order directly from them the rest uh, i i do provide uh, information and, and if possible to order uh, uh, with me so some of them are tested with this uh, called assure program like synth uh, 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 this screener two gem pen and ID hundred. 
uh, I added more instruments because uh, I'm doing uh, all uh, kind of diamonds, not only synthetic natural, I also do treated. So this is different between me and uh, and uh, before I go to this uh, very complicated uh, table, uh, I'll might uh, just show you one slide, uh, my, one video, hopefully it will work. Uh, how uh, one of the uh, uh, these uh, instruments is working, and then we can go further. Okay, let me see if I can just uh, get this uh, going. So. Okay. So just give me a second. I'm opening uh, the video, and it's just two, two minutes video, and uh, I will talk over this. Uh, it's about how to use uh, one of the UV lamp by uh, uh, Geometrix called Jeweler Inspector. Just a second uh, to check. Uh, and in this in this case is piece of jewelry so i will just go quickly over and then we can continue with the presentation okay so so we have here uh, two earrings hopefully you can see the screen and uh, i'll talk over so i mean one earring uh, two pieces of course it, it, it's it's two pieces earring so uh, why I'm showing this because it has a melee and has a, it's mounted, so it's a little bit different, but still, uh, we can use uh, this uh, instrument, the jewelry inspector, because designed for jewelry also could be we could put many, many um, small loose diamonds, and you can do more than one item at a time. You can see here there's a long view fluorescence I, I put first on the left, you can see the stone uh, has uh, some uh, emission. Uh, and then I will compare to the, uh, I'll do a short TV. Uh, you will see now uh, comparing it is much better. So uh, each time we can uh, click here, take image and, and saving directly to the library. It's a free uh, app, uh, Geometrix, uh, possible to download by Android or or, or uh, iPhone. So uh, the most important, important feature, I'm starting to use this more last uh, two, three years. Uh, of course, using my eyes and comparing the color, but sometimes it's very subtle difference. So what is nice, you can save this uh, and compare uh, long view and short view. You'll see in a second, and then it will be clear which one is which. So I'm comparing now, and two screens. You can see now uh, going from long UV. I, I can stop it now just to show it. Long UV, you can see, and then I'm going to short UV. And uh, if you look very carefully, short UV on the left, I'm stopping now for you. It's stronger on the left earrings and weaker on the right. And uh, uh, when I compare this, uh, there's a very nice feature called slider, very important. So you can basically see, you can see here towards me or you, it's a, it's a short UV. You can see how short UV is weaker in natural diamond, this is natural. And short UV is stronger on the left side, this is a synthetic. So this is a simple way to uh, basically screen your jewelry or item. See this one, lo long UV is weak, medium blue, but non under short UV. And it's opposite on the left zone. It's uh, almost none. It's weak blue, but medium uh, to strong uh, greenish yellow. And if I leave a, a, a fluorescence, sorry, a lamp on, it will uh, phosphorus. This is a, a very simple way, basically, to separate uh, to screen your uh, diamond. And this, it's so important that I. Uh, first thing, what I do, and I know you can see in the back of my laboratory, but uh, first thing, what I do. Before I go to microscope, I go to, of course, under my lamp that I have here also, and uh, loop the diamond, of course. The second thing, I take this little uh, peel inspector. I'll just grab it uh, quickly. So you, you have a smaller version uh, that is for loose diamond, but uh, because I'm working in a dark uh, laboratory on purpose, I choose this bed, no windows. So I'm like a mouse in the dark. Uh, most of the day, uh, what we need to do, uh, look at the diamonds uh, inclusion better. And then I'm losing this as a loop. Uh, this is 10 times of, I think, seven magnification. Every piece of jewelry, I would look under this. Basically, it's a, it's a UV uh, lamp with a with magnifier. So that way I can screen my diamonds. If I see something unusual, like, I can show you that diamond is stronger on the short UV light. 
uh, I will definitely then go to another test, uh, what I'll show you at the end, uh, spectroscopy uh, EXA. Uh, this is the three steps uh, that I will do almost every piece of diamond or jewelry to make sure. Uh, of course, there are other instruments uh, I will check if it's loose infrared, I can do visible spectra if I, if I have uh, other uh, problems. So sorry, it's a very busy slide, but uh, uh, again, uh, this will be done on 11 instruments. Uh, I just exclude that huge uh, uh, DRC uh, jewelry one the over ten thousand dollars. I, 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 I try to be up to ten thousand in portable instruments, but here uh, just to give you an example. Uh, this kit that I was talking about uh, here's a experienced person can have only four to seven percent of referrals. Depends, of course, on the stone and and problems. And uh, this is uh, maybe five to eight, so it's not bad. Over ninety percent. Uh, is possible to screen with just on fluorescence, uh, my, my experience. And of course, there's other uh, instruments that are uh, good, but uh, more than as a screener. This is 10%, uh, up to 10% uh, screening possible uh, stones because you cannot always detect, especially this is very important. Uh, many of them has limitation of, of this way. I want to publish this article as a summary of what is limitation of each instrument. Because people ask me in the workshop, oh, do you know about Ari? Do you know about uh, gemologists? Uh, I said, I didn't use them, but now I, I studied them, use them. Limitation is a color range. So this I cannot do under J color. This one can go up to M, which is good. This is K. Uh, X can go N. And this is designed for that. X can do much more, but uh, it's designed for that. So if you have a, just a UV lamp uh, and a loop, of course, you can do any diamond, any gemstones, but it's more gemological tool and you need more training. This is difference. So anyway, this is just a summary. And of course, uh, a different uh, time, some of them 15, 20 seconds, if you're fast, 10 seconds or very fast, three, five seconds, sometimes two seconds, but you have to really do uh, or one up to one minute uh, because digital uh, way to do it in J mini. So all depends on the, on the size of the stones of this mounted or not of the color. And then you have different methods here. I explain everything, but you will see now instrument by instrument is just a summary uh, of the results at least half of them and uh, i'll try to uh, tell you more in the next few slides and then of course uh, see more samples because it's all about samples this is my lecture about uh, what is different with my study and study from a short program that uh, they give a lot of diamonds more than i have uh, to some independent laboratory but nobody knows who what are these diamonds okay they say it's from d to j range and whatever few hundred a thousand stones I, I choose to do less diamonds, but to do uh, more variety. I choose 55 diamonds and seven imitations. Out of that, uh, 17 are natural diamonds, natural color. Uh, only four I put uh, one that are treated because it's not a focus to do treatments, but I, I put it there just to see what instruments can do. 18 are HPHD grown, uh, only two are colored, and uh, 16 are CVD grown. I think this will give a, quite a good cross section of what each instrument can do. And I recorded uh, basically on 70, uh, sorry, 62 samples, all these results. So this is a most simple one. And of course, uh, every instrument has good points. Uh, this is good, fast. Uh, now I'm going away, for example, uh, next tomorrow for a few weeks. And I told my gemologist, uh, use this uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, or if you're not sure. Why? Because sometimes you have these kind of rings. You can see here how it's complicated. They're very small diamonds. And uh, sometimes they're not uh, trans back uh, is closed, so automatically you limit your some instruments that cannot do close backs. They need transparency to, to UV light. They need the, uh, you can do spectroscopy so well. You can, but only with EXA. You need fiber optics. So every instrument has good uh, points. This is my, uh, but of course it has no limitation. Uh, this one, it's basically screener. You will screen type two and one AB diamond natural. But also laboratory grown to uh, type two, so it will give this result. If it's uh, and this is the ring, it has a few uh, smaller CVD on the side. It will give a hopefully you can see uh, it says uh, HPHT CVD type uh, uh, two uh, possibility. Or what is very good uh, uh, feature, just said natural is diamond. So it's good for jewelers and gemologists and present who has a lot of pieces and want to finish in a short time. Okay, I have natural diamond, I double check, it's natural. But if it's a referral, then it's become, you need more testing. And this is all, so approximately over $1,000, this one. So this is the one, uh, my idea, my uh, design, my, uh, of course, uh, uh, I uh, 
told my colleague John Chapman, who is editor of the next book, uh, to make this instrument after conference in Greece before Spain. Why? Because I realized that these uh, UV boxes that are on the market uh, doesn't work very well in a, in, in a light environment like this one. It has a lot of lights now. So it has to be closed box, and I close it, and now you can make a picture through the, through the top. And this is results. Uh, this is natural diamonds, 100% uh, dust based on fluorescence, because this is obviously stronger than this. And this is a HPHT grown diamond, almost 100%, but dust based on fluorescence. Short UV is obviously stronger. And this is more tricky. Actually, this is done by my, uh, my colleague, uh, George Spremilus from uh, Athens did, uh, because 50 Mela diamonds came to his laboratory and uh, he showed me pictures and, and uh, we did some study and we published it together in a little booklet on fluorescence of diamonds. So uh, this is a definitely indication the stone is synthetic. Of course, then we, uh, I can back it up. This is a little portable polariscope you put on the light. Why it's nice? Because it's portable. You go to the shows, you go to the field, and it's back up with the two booklets, one of fluorescence and one on, on cross polarized filters. This is basically your mini portable lab. Of course, you can add a little spectrometer here and, and use it for gemstones. And of course, you have a loop. This is how it looks. Uh, uh, one a diamond looks different. This is a two way diamond. This is, I'm just comparing two way here and HPHT and CVD. And this is a kit, uh, very good for workshops. I'm using it a lot. Um, this is a uh, difference between a PL inspector designed more for one stone at a time, uh, single stones uh, loose, and drill inspector designed for rings, earrings, and could be loose or melee. You can turn out this upside down and check melee. This is a typical uh, ring with the phosphorescence of diamonds that uh, the synthetic HPHT grown. And uh, this is from the next book. I give you some preview just to show you how it's easy. I showed these earrings today, but I just want to, to remind you this is how it looks uh, under long UV. You can see here this stone. Is medium blue under long UV and non under short UV, natural. This is a big blue, same stone I was showing, a big blue, and this is like uh, medium to strong uh, green, yellow, yellow, green, and phosphorescing. This is definitely synthetic. This is how it's possible just to screen. And I'm doing it uh, always uh, for essence. Uh, I'm teaching for 10 years for essence. So this is my kind of uh, technique that I love so much because you can tell so much. You can predict the specter of a diamond that's based on fluorescence if you are very good and doing a lot. And I'm doing it. So another instrument that I have it here, and it's very, uh, it's a little bit bigger, like a gem pen. It's this size, like a big pen, uh, designed by Gemometrics from Sweden. It has a uh, filters. Uh, instead of uh, saying exactly long UV, short UV, it has a filter one, filter four, for example, that are very important, and also two and three for other gemstones. Uh, why I like it? Because uh, it's all depends on the source how strong is the light, it's quite a strong source. So this is the two stones that looks similar, uh, could be natural, could be synthetic, could be treated. On the left, this is from collection I was using. You can see under under uh, filter, uh, under filter, I always have to remember this. Yes, uh, filter four, which is approximately, they won't tell me exactly, uh, wavelength, but approximately long UV light. You can see a kind of weak orange here and almost none, you can see this, almost none. This will be definitely known in another UV lamp. This will be maybe even very weak. So this is a stronger source, so you can see something, which is good. And then the filter one, which is a basically very important filter, uh, short UV. You can see how fluorescence become uh, definitely medium uh, 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 green blue. Uh, uh, and this one become uh, weak, uh, weak uh, orange. Why it's important? Because again, if you use standard UV lamp, uh, GA or other, other producer, uh, you might say all of this is known. But if you have a stronger uh, gem pen, uh, you can really see it. I mean, this one is uh, more than $2,000 with two filters, could be, could be more with four filters. What is nice, you can see they also have this booklet, uh, they're giving these colors. This is all possibilities of CVD colors. As you can see, uh, could be a variety of colors. So it's not only, uh, only by color, this is blue color. But be careful, it's blue color under filter one, what is a short UV light. And it's a non under filter four, what is a long UV light. So this is a ratio of colors telling you if it's CVD or not, not just color. Uh, if it's just color, uh, this is unusual color. Uh, for, but any diamond naturally one can show these colors, but which, uh, uh, which wavelength is important. And uh, yeah, this they were, they were my, uh, uh, supposed to be my speakers at the next conference and, uh, and sponsors. So they will come uh, hopefully next year to, to Greece and we can meet them and see the instrument uh, by yourself. This is a, a latest one I study. I showed you quickly, J Mini. Uh, I you including my uh, next book. I think it's a, a good screening instrument. Uh, it's designed for jewelry, and this is what it is. Uh, you can put also melee, you can put loose, 
but we put I put here one, two, three rings and two type of earrings to show you variety. And uh, takes uh, maybe forty five seconds, a little bit longer because you're checking four different uh, level of of screens. It's not only this is level one. It will mark for you. This is a special marking: uh, blue in the center, green in the circle. And, sorry, green in the square. This is definitely synthetic. The, and there, they're all HPST grown here. You can see, and this one here. This is all finished. Finished. Then sometimes you need to go to second level or third level. The three uh, they call it photoluminescence and fluorescence. This is fluorescence, for example, uh, a level that you can check fluorescence uh, like you would do with UV lamp. And they're saying, and it works when you see any kind of bluish fluorescence. That this is bluish, bluish. You can see here on the side maybe a little bit bluish. Of course, you can magnify this and study better. This is just the images. This is natural diamonds. Uh, you can see here a circle. This one also. It's a basically uh, uh, light brown diamond. Very very tricky. Uh, not successful CVD. Circle is suspicious stone. But then this for essence orange. Uh, anytime you, you see this kind of color, it, it, it's an indication of CVD. And then you can do another level uh, photomass. These two stones here are imitation. They're, no design for that. This is a, a, a basically, I think, uh, the CZ, yeah, CZ. So it's not for, but there's some strange fluorescence. What is uh, what is unusual? And my experience is CZ fluorescence on the short UV and long UV, different than natural diamond. So it's possible to use it, but it's not designed for that. This is uh, about mini uh, mini uh, J screen, a uh, uh, small instrument. It's around four and a half thousand dollars, but important for people who make a lot of jewelry. So now another case study uh, that I would, if you are in the workshop, I would give you these stones and uh, give you the, a huge uh, printout and you can keep this information uh, for yourself. Uh, but this is uh, what I do online uh, kind of uh, uh, workshop. But I'll go for this because it's important uh, uh, to look at them. Uh, this is a blue diamond. OK, this is very obvious. It's a huge metallic inclusion. On purpose, I'm showing these stones because this magnetic stone I2, OK, triangular metallic crystal magnetic. Phosphorescence more than a minute, no pattern. Tie to be, but a lot of boron. We can see later uh, my spectra. When you have excess an amount of boron, you're suspicious always on synthetic because natural diamond has much less boron. And there's some uh, pure spectra that's not very diagnostic, but uh, anyway, it's there. This is stone very interesting. This is minor only, maybe or one or two that have yellowish or yellow. This is brownish, greenish, yellow. Very natural looking color because very unusual color. But it is uh, not natural diamond. Why? First, this is small black carbon crystals. Okay, this is a question of experience. If you use high magnification, you can really see it's amorphous carbon or not. But it's difficult. To, many people will confuse it with the graphite spot in natural diamond. So it's not 100%. This is important. Very weak yellow. Again, with a good UV lamp. And this is what I'm showing in another video, but I'm not time today. Uh, medium green yellow, weak short phosphorescence. Much stronger than long UV. Oh, something wrong. Then this is very important. This stone has very typical, very strong columnar pattern. Very nice. These two tests alone will tell me, or this uh, could be CVD. Type 2A, proving it, but I'm nailing it with the PL spectroscopy that is visible that has 737. This is a key line. Of course, additional enemy centers here. This is synthetic diamond CVD. OK, so next, uh, this is my little uh, pinkish diamond. It's really faint pink. It's JK color. So many instruments want to detect it because below J, some some will do, but simple uh, simple instruments like a loop, a microscope, we can see natural crystals. Those who do natural diamonds can recognize diamond, but that's by crystal because this is uh, maybe Ivan Stone. I forgot to write here Ivan Stone. Remember, strong blue, big blue, typical for essence Vargal diamond. Strong multicolor pattern, typical uh, pattern of natural one A A B, and this is typical spectra. I studied this a lot for the last five years, so I can I can. Um, I can say I am one, one, one of the experts on pink diamonds because I studied them for five countries uh, for five years. So, uh, and this is a typical uh, spectra of natural pink diamonds, 415 and 550, typical peel spectra. Additionally, we see enemy center. This is important. This is actually a mistake here. Uh, so if you remove this, sorry, I left from some other, there's no 67 in this one. But to make you more confused, some pink diamond from some sources like India, Golconda could have smaller 637 and some orange fluorescence. But as long as long UV is stronger than short UV and the pattern is type 2A, this is type 2A. Uh, this is a different type. This is this is a different story. But just to tell you that uh, spectroscopy alone should never be used only. You always back up with the microscopy, fluorescence, and of course, 
cross polarized filter. This is my uh, uh, advice to you. And this is a stone that was very, very tricky. Why? Because many instruments, including some $20,000 instrument, I won't mention the names, uh, pass it uh, uh, as natural. But why? Because the fluorescence is almost the same as very weak, weak. This is really strong UV light, but basically it's non or very weak. Uh, that's why if it's based only on fluorescence or, or transparency, it's not good. But if it's based, this is instrument, $100 cross polarized filters, can tell you that strong columnar pattern like this cannot be natural diamond. Two a diamond could be natural, nitrogen free, okay. But this is nailing it again. In the EXA or photonescent good spectrometer, you can see 737. Uh, sometimes you cannot possibly see invisible because the defect is very small. Uh, that's why it's important also to cool it down and, and use good uh, photonescence. This is basically a combination of this kit and the uh, in-spectrum is a small instrument I'll sh use, show you later, an EXA telling you this is uh, these diamonds uh, are synthetic, one natural. So this is for me, my, my, my marking, when it's uh, uh, red is uh, CVD, when it's orange is HPHT and green is natural. You can see in my workshop, I'm doing this kind of uh, separation, easy for people to remember and find. So this is, a, uh, this is the, uh, one of the old, old uh, photos. This is like 15, 20 years ago, but I'm still using it in a book, it's now a book. Why? Because in 2008, I was at Berlin at the European Diamond Conference, very scientific, all PhDs and all uh, university people. I was one, one of the few that only, only Bachelor of Science in Geology and they thought I'm, I'm some doctor or something. Anyway, I was talking about uh, pink diamonds, but in that uh, conference, I met people from Ukraine, Kiev, that showed me these uh, little crystals like this. Wow, so many. And we're not lazy, we cut them in small diamonds and we studied them. Why? Because about the same time, 2001, uh, this ring came to the uh, laboratory in New York, and my colleague was uh, 2002. Dusham was just uh, replacing me there, and he, we worked together. I moved to Canada, and out of all these stones, one of them, one of them, was very unusual uh, fluorescence. I will show you. This is basically uh, putting. Uh, at that time, we didn't have uh, these other instruments, uh, so we put UV light under the microscope and make a picture for the camera or microscope. I hope you can see uh, this one stone uh, showed this Q. Uh, oh, cubic uh, structure and green fluorescence on the short QV. This is 254, only one. And this is the first time we, we basically detect Mele uh, synthetic diamond in jewelry. You put the press release, uh, it, it was a super conference in Vancouver, talk about this. But because uh, we are kind of coming from smaller lab and we are not, at that time, at least we are not very known. We're just starting to do a lot of research, 2001, 2002. Uh, they didn't pay attention and then of course, uh, I was in 2001 in a factory Ilgin in South Korea. I've seen thousands and thousands of small yellow diamonds produced there with the 95 presses. Uh, and the five of them, they were uh, changing color diamonds, but 95 are just growing diamonds. So I knew that male diamonds are, are for 15 years on the market, but just the last 10 years, are big labs talking about this, talking about GIA and other labs. So anyway, uh, this is uh, our experience. And uh, since then we do a lot of uh, study of mounted stones because it's a little bit different story. We cannot use all the time classic spectrometers. Why? Because we cannot take a spectra, especially if it's a closed back, uh, not, not uh, open back. Cross polarized filters is limited. It's possible to use on these earrings, for example. I use on earrings if it's open uh, on the solitary rings, but not on, on, on closed backs. Microscope is limited only if it's SA1 uh, or lower quality, because if it's VS and VVS is very limited, but for essence is very useful. Not only uh, a classic lamp, the, I use PL jewel inspector, diamond pen, uh, J screen and diet through from RG also based on for essence. U transparency uh, is possible with Ari, uh, uh, I will show you open, uh, I'll show you actually, so even if it's a uh, close back could, could do, but like better open back. And of course, uh, uh, I like uh, photonescence microscopy by X. Uh, could be other way, but this is uh, one that is nice and easy to use. So this is uh, my example of jewelry. Uh, this become more complicated because on purpose, a uh, couple of years ago, uh, me and George Spermilos, uh, I told him, let's put some uh, small diamonds in jewelry and use it for workshop. We'll first do a workshop with the mounted stones. And we do it every year. Uh, now we, we stopped two years, but uh, we do every time we do a workshop. So, this is stone, it has half of the stones are natural, half of them are synthetic, uh, and orange is for HPHT grown. So what we see, we see some natural crystals or metallic inclusions, if they're quite small, very small, but you can magnify it. 
Typical fluorescence, could be non, could be strong blue, typical phosphorescence, no pattern. Believe it or not, even on the side, if you do high magnification, put polariscope under microscope, you can see a pattern, not all the time, but sometimes, or absence of pattern. In this case, absence of pattern, no pattern, tell you that is a possible uh, HPST. And uh, this is important, uh, cap lines definitely telling you, uh, X will tell pass, pass, pass. On second level, you see cap lines, X are here, refer, 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 and, and we see these bands uh, that the uh, indication uh, that are uh, HPHT grown. This is a type of stone, uh, the more tricky than HPHT CVD. Why? Because uh, spots could be very small, uh, difficult to see in a small diamond, very weak or very weak greenish yellow, but this one has nice columnar pattern. You can see it with the microscope, but this is nailing it uh, photoluminescent 737, and this is natural diamond. This is, of course, smudge pattern I showed you before, not so obvious, but still there. Sometimes it's very difficult to see big blue, non, but it, it's possible to see. That's why if you make a picture and save it, uh, it's much better than just visually looking at it. This is more complicated. Uh, I showed this uh, uh, with one instrument before with this uh, J-mini center stone, and one side is natural, and this side is CVD. Again, weak greenish yellow, medium column pattern, 737, nailing it. Uh, this is a final test. And cape lines, a smudge pattern, and fluorescence, crystals, of many things. This is clean stone, for example. Uh, could be clean. Um, it has some fracture SI, but it's not uh, conclusive. And this is one uh, uh, pink uh, that is irradiated uh, uh, CVD by American company, American Grown. You can see small, small amorphous carbon, but not uh, easy to separate. This is this is what is giving it away. Strong orange, strong orange. This is either natural treated or synthetic treated. And I'll show you one video how to separate these two. And the cross polis pattern, uh, coarse pattern is indication, but this is basically final answer is spectroscopy. When you have color diamonds, uh, spectroscopy is almost must. Uh, you cannot do it without spectroscopy. 575637 five, is such a strong uh, ration. Uh, I even demonstrating a small uh, portable uh, $100 uh, spectroscopy Spectroscope is possible to use for pink diamonds if you know how to use it and see the 637 line in a small portable uh, 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 spectroscope. Okay, so let me just uh, stop this for a second and then we have a final thing on spectroscopy. Uh, a lot of information, but uh, I hope you, uh, you like it so far because the idea is to give you a summary or what we did in nine webinars. And now it's like a case study uh, what, what really you can... Uh, do. Now it's also a chance for me to have a little break because now on this video, I, I, was, I was smart to record the uh, tone as well. So uh, let me just share the screen and you can draw a little bit on spectroscopy uh, with EXA uh, from RG Labs, uh, how to use uh, on pink diamonds in this case. Uh, very interesting. Uh, let me share and enjoy and see you in a few minutes. Okay. After using simple portable spectroscope it is useful for many gems but not so precise for diamonds because we need to look over the more details it's under hundred dollars instrument but if you invest uh, eight eight and a half thousand dollars instrument and get something like exa or j screen made by magi labs we can do more in details I have three stones Number one, three, and four. What is nice, we can also use this uh, strong uh, PL laser. It is really uh, correspond to long UV uh, light in a jewel inspector, peel inspector. We can see it's quite strong blue fluorescence. In spastic natural diamond, even in this instrument is not designed for color diamonds. It's designed for colorless diamonds for screening natural synthetic. Uh, spectra is very typical for natural diamonds with the blue fluorescence. In this case, it's Argyle diamond, but some other places could have similar spectra. We see peaks from 400 to 500, what is called Cape lines. 415 is the strongest, 478. And this is a very good way to confirm natural origin and natural color. Second stone is also pink. It's more intense, darker purple pink. And under long UV light is mixture of fluorescence between orange and blue, what is typical for multi-step treated stones, is passing the natural diamond what is good. It is natural because on the left side we can see peaks that correspond to natural diamonds, 
and uh, probably with brownish or yellowish uh, original color that is post treated all these peaks on the right um, around 575 what is NV center nitrogen vacancy center to 637 and other NV centers uh, are due to irradiation and post treatment and we can uh, uh, kind of find these uh, peaks uh, with, with the cursor and study them more and uh, this is a final way to tell this is a stone is treated the value is much less than natural color of course but it's still natural diamond the last stone is mounted in the ring it's it's pink diamond that has very strong orange fluorescence and the long uv uh, laser or 365 what is nice is also referring uh, to further testing it is not natural by first level screening on the second level you can see the real spectra it's not really always 100% confirming synthetic but it's confirming in this case that stone is post treated and looks very similar to that treated natural diamond because it has this again 575 lines and 637 corresponding to irradiation and heat treatment we will confirm the static origin with the other instrument like the cross polaris filters and spectroscopy okay I hope you enjoy it uh, a little as much as I can do practical I can show videos uh, uh, of the instrument and uh, I think it was uh, interesting I want to encourage you to actually ask questions uh, now or uh, you can use chat but uh, I prefer if you use Q&A that it's easier for me to, to look uh, at the end we will finish here around 10-15 minutes so uh, then we can ask questions uh, we can ask now but I'll answer them in 10-15 minutes when I finish last block of uh, of uh, spectroscopy what is uh, many of you are very complicated uh, it is takes time of course to, to study but all idea about advanced gemology uh, seminar that i'm doing uh, with other colleagues is to teach you about spectroscopy uh, and co combined with the standard instrument this is one very portable very small uh, actually i can show you super small So this is how it looks. Okay, almost dropped. Uh, so you, you basically put the diamond on the top. Why I like it? Because it's portable. You can carry it with you. Uh, uh, it's not, of course, very high resolution as, as many other spectrometers, but the uh, price is uh, around $4,000. So you can still see the uh, 550 pink band, the natural diamond, the 415, uh, which is the argyle diamond. And then you can see the one that's multi-step treated. You can see 637. Uh, uh, you can uh, use the cursor and find this peak, and uh, you can also check CVD uh, diamond. In this case, uh, it uh, has additional 575, and it could be used for many gemstones. I'm just starting to use it for gemstones. Uh, maybe the next booklets uh, on I cover uh, in gemstones uh, red and pink uh, gems and uh, green. In the last two years now, I, I will go to blue and yellow. Hopefully, I'll find energy. You have to choose should I write more books or do more advanced uh, uh, gemology next uh, fall uh, fall or, or winter I'll, I'll decide when i come back uh, but uh, this is what it is and exa is one of the my favorite because uh, again uh, i like spectroscopy and like portability and i like that it can do mounted stones and uh, refers all stones that are cvd or hpht and of course will uh, refer also approximately two percent maybe three percent depends Sometimes four percent is unusual for essence, but I, I said two to three percent of natural diamonds. But on second level, with the advanced user mode, you can really uh, do more. And this is again uh, give some preview because you came uh, to listen to me today. You can see something from the next book, but not everything, of course. It, it's a two hundred fifty pages book, and this is <laughs> just some of the slides. So this is how it looks. Uh, uh, one of the, my sample, uh, yeah, natural diamond pass and cape lines. Very simple. Uh, refer. And then you can see a huge band here, uh, close to 500, 480, also 450. But this is, in, in this case, not always there, not always, but if it's a nickel catalyst, you have an 890 uh, band, it's HPHT grown. And this is the stone I was showing to you before with that different instrument. That's live, you see how it looks a small peak uh, on the back. 
and you can of course save it to magnify print uh, email to friends this is 737 silicon vacancy pick this is the way to separate very quickly and uh, when i don't see very well fluorescence and or i'm not sure don't see inclusions or i cannot do cross polar pattern here this is the way to go uh, for me at least here uh doing rings and uh, a relatively small amount of, of stones I, I, we have three people here uh, gemologists and two office people so it's a small laboratory compared to uh, with canada but this is we be doing still uh, a lot of stones doesn't mean a uh, size of laboratory this is also small laboratory uh, but very very powerful very uh, well equipped from uh, ggtl uh, thomas henschwag uh, was our speaker last time and he developed this dfi mid uv laser why because he works a lot a lot with the with the uh, swiss uh, jewelry uh, watch industry and they have a lot of melee and they have uh, in france a few companies uh, so he needs to basically check every little stone. And so what he did, he combined uh, fluorescence uh, imaging uh, spectra, sorry, uh, image that I was showing to you with uh, uh, at the same time uh, uh, photoluminescence spectra. So basically in a few seconds, he get image of the stone plus fluorescence, uh, sorry, emission uh, spectra. And he can see uh, and, and system is telling you natural or, or or synthetic in this case, and he pick up some treated uh, HPHT small stones. It's a very good system, but the price is, uh, I think, 75,000 even more now. So it is pricey, but uh, it's good. Uh, this is something I recommend to GRS laboratory, and they, they, they bought, uh, you can see here, uh, system. this system itself is around $100,000. Plus, if you need to back it up with one infrared uh, spectrometer, this is one from Gemo, Raman, Gemo FTIR, that is around 20, 25, maybe. And this is a system that can do diamond gemstones, but uh, 405 and uh, 532 laser you can protect. Uh, you can cool down the uh, diamond with nitrogen uh, here. You can put quite big pieces, uh, even uh, rings, and take uh, spectra. Uh, this is what I was studying pink diamonds with this system, and it's very, very, very good. But the price is, again, over $100,000. Uh, then with this kind of system, uh, for example, when I was uh, uh, conference in Greece 2015. I went uh, quickly to Russia uh, to visit uh, uh, my my wife uh, uh, family. But then I went to St. Petersburg, and the company who was growing these diamonds there, NDT, uh, we had a chance to visit the factory and pick up five biggest stone from four to ten carat. And with Miko Anstrom, in one day, all day we tested with uh, all his and mine advanced instruments, portable instruments. We sent to GRS, published quickly article. This is basically what you can see in a two-way coralless diamonds. E color, I color, D color, with the infrared. So additional uh, peaks here, what is the bottom peak, and a little bit of uh, uh, single nitrogen, maybe. I think it's difficult to see. We can definitely see better invisible this evidence of single nitrogen. Uh, this is uh, something you can say based on this, and of course, other techniques uh, that I show you standard. This is uh, not natural diamond. It doesn't have this combination two way and boron in, in a D color diamond. So all these things, small things, of course, uh, we combine and uh, and uh, present. So to summarize this, uh, I'm focusing today, sorry, only on the lab ground diamond, because uh, if I cover treatments, it'd be two hours lecture. And uh, I was warned a few times. I did last year two and a half hours lecture. And people say, it's too long. You cannot follow. So I keep it one hour and a half. Uh, so this is just summary. Metallic inclusions, color zoning, this is sometimes present. Characteristic pattern under cross polarized filters can tell you a lot for essence, of course. Advanced instruments, EXA, visible for HPHT, infrared, if you type 2A or single nitrogen, diamond view, DFI. You can do chemistry, of course, to prove these metal elements, but only if it's lower quality. And peer spectroscopy, of course, is important. This All this we are now using it and presenting it. So this is kind of last lecture, so I, I, I need to go back to this uh, uh, slide. And if you want to get a nice poster for free, because uh, I mean, I'm I'm good guy from Canada, and uh, I'm also uh, in good mood. So, uh, so this is a poster I did for the, for the uh, GA symposium uh, 2018. I'll just show you quickly how it looks. So it's quite a, a nice poster uh, to get with a lot of pictures and steps. The difference between uh, this poster and this uh, uh, schematic diagram that John Trapp makes nicely is that you have pictures here. So if you just go on Branco Gems website and drop your email there uh, to be on the mailing list, if you're not, you're, you're ready, but you can do it again as a poster. You will get this poster as a digital poster. Yeah, I'll give you as a present digital poster uh, because it's difficult to mail this and it's awkward. So you can get digitally print by yourself. So I'll just uh, 
quickly show you fluorescence, none, need for more testing, uh, cross polarized filter, filters, if it's tatami uh, for natural or uh, normally strong natural. Long UV, it's even better, uh, natural for sure. Uh, if it's short UV stronger, we go and phosphorescing with HPHT grown. If it doesn't phosphoresce, it's still checked by fringes. Could be non HPHT, columnar CVD, could be very rare, uh, but very rare. I've never seen uh, short UV stronger, but could be. Uh, type 2A could be misleading, uh, could be some natural, but you have to check. This is a case to go to further testing. A metallic inclusion, of course, a synthetic. Uh, okay, this is UV transparency. This is the three tests I was talking about fluorescence. UV transparency and advanced. UV transparency, this is ARI and uh, other instruments uh, that are, if it's a, if it's a non, not transparent, it's type 1A, it will tell natural diamond. diamond. If it's a referring, you have to go further or sometimes this pattern is not so conclusive. We could do infrared, we do photoluminescence spectroscopy, we do visible spectroscopy, we find entry center, uh, we not type 2A natural, we find the silicon, nickel, synthetic, and sometimes is even this is a uh, misleading or we want to double check then we have to look at the grow pattern how the diamonds are growing is it nice uh, natural regular pattern but the diamonds very heavy co complex growth i have a few uh, geologists here and those who study diamonds uh, uh, at university so they know how it's complex growth of natural diamonds if it's a layered geometric uh, cube octahedral or, or parallel uh, cvd uh, then it's synthetic this is just a quick summary but it's uh, much more in this poster so this is the last thing I was showing you, these pink diamonds. I just want to show you how it looks. Uh, uh, again, we just uh, remind you, natural diamonds, uh, visible spectra. This is uh, intense pink uh, HPHT, visible spectra, additional peaks, and the center. You show it in this video. This is a stone I was showing you, uh, fancy uh, intense pink, uh, strong uh, fluorescence plus uh, visible spectra. And this is something I didn't talk too much about diamond treatments, but uh, definitely we can uh, some other lecture, uh, or you can go back uh, and, and download this, this this lecture for free on pink diamonds. I, I think I'm talking there about that pink diamonds. Uh, you can see additional uh, cape lines plus this defect. This means natural diamonds. So to summarize everything, uh, this is how I group these instruments um, uh, the, from the most accurate to the least. Uh, uh, EXA in spectrum, are, because the based on spectroscopy, I think one to three percent the GA ID hundred because uh, they want they don't have second level, just referring maybe four uh, percent. J screen or mini screen, uh, this is screening instrument now. This is more ID or more too close to final. This is screening. This is three, three to six, four to seven, five to eight. This is approximately a uh, referral rate or accuracy rate. And transparent to short UV, a light uh, uh, RE Vista screener, I mean, the main instrument, but I studied this uh, up to 10% depends on um, uh, stone and uh, how difficult it is. This is my summary. And conclusion is that, uh, yes, uh, beside, it's not enough just to buy instrument and uh, accept some magic, you need training. Uh, the best to do personal in-house training uh, with me or other people. Uh, who are doing this? Uh, the very few of us who are doing this, uh, like this, uh, with the with the samples to and instruments, and to, to travel around the world. Uh, so, I combine standard and advanced uh, because this is the best way to do. And my colleagues uh, Alberto Scarani and Mikko Anstrom, who who make this marginal lapse instrument, they also said it's not possible to do 100% only with one instrument. So combination is the best. And in our last book, uh, me and Dushan also talking about this. Uh, do, good to do a combination of the instruments. Two three is the best. Uh, actually, the best to do each instrument from each group, uh, if it's possible. And of course, I could not uh, tell you everything, so I will tell you to go. This is my best uh, uh, kind of uh, resume to show you my list of papers. There are close to 30 papers on diamonds uh, over the last 20 years. And whoever wants to read more, I can I hear most of this paper, all of them. I can send, uh, you can just tell me, uh, do you want more pink diamonds, you want correlates, you want more uh, on advanced techniques or jewelry and i have uh, sorted out so this is just a like a uh, cream on cream on, on the cake uh, additional uh, i decided to do it last moment because uh, i think it's nice to show you uh, what uh, we do at the workshops and this is one of the conferences we did in montenegro 2018 Marge labs came with the uh, three instruments on the ferry from from italy and this is their uh, photomessence roman this is their infrared 
This is the UV visible and this is X I was talking about. So natural diamond colorless, what we can see. Okay, this is just a diamond, uh, Raman Peak. We can see here is type 1A, B, hydrogen, everything good. A lot of uh, cape lines, additional peaks. System can also pinpoint each stone, give you definition of the type. Very nice software Miko Armstrong made. And X, very, very quickly, same thing. Uh, just telling you this is natural diamond. Next one uh, was... Uh, uh, CVD, uh, I think, yes. So next one, CVD. Uh, so CVD has an additional silicon vacancy center in photoluminescence. And uh, what is nice about this, uh, they also get, uh, they show you these uh, uh, differences, uh, uh, Raman and uh, photoluminescence. Type 2A non nitrogen, this is uh, just tell you type 2A, uh, doesn't help you too much, but tiny bit of silicon vacancy invisible. No, no N3, but quite visible uh, silico vacancy in, in photoluminescence, the DEXA and, and the Raman, this is a nice, uh, strong. So this is a telling you CVD. Uh, next is uh, HPHT. Uh, again, this is just telling you it's a diamond, but here's some uh, additional bottom peak I was mentioning that what is not uh, common for natural diamonds. This is a suspicious or almost a proof. Transparent, see how it's transparent to, uh, to UV light uh, or this mean it's type 2 and no entry center. And this is a, these nickel nickel defects. So sometimes it's not present. So it doesn't mean if it's not there, it's natural. It doesn't mean this pattern, uh, even 750 pattern is what we're looking. Uh, and what is nice about system, you can uh, have a library, you can compare and choose different, uh, pick up the, from the library and compare your spectra. If you're not sure, this is, for example, tested samples, and we can compare with the one in the library like this. So it's very nice. Uh, yellow diamonds, uh, uh, this is natural one. It's quite rare. Uh, it's just a raising uh, absorption here. It's, uh, it's showing some uh, amber center, what is important, are over 4,000 million numbers that uh, present in natural diamond, but absent in uh, yellow synthetic diamond. And here's a single nitrogen with some A aggregation. And you can see here uh, some envy center. Uh, this is synthetic one. And a little bit of single nitrogen, you can see uh, like a uh, pattern. And to finish with pinks, I was showing you this just to summarize again envy centers. Uh, this is evidence of irradiation, H1, HIB, uh, close to 5,000 wave numbers. In this new book, we, we, we're showing all these peaks, explanation of the peaks. So you don't have to remember all of this. You just have to get the book and, and, and basically read it or have it as a reference. And this is uh, all these X uh, showing this envy peak plus H3 center, all this uh, proving that there's some additional heat. In this case, diamond is natural, which is good. So it means it's natural diamond, but treated. And the last two is HPHT synthetic, uh, enemy center type 2A, GR1 radiation, very interesting. This is uh, because it's a uh, post treated. This is 741. And this is at enemy center. So not, not every instrument showing everything. This is combination. This is better for radiation. This is bad. So it all depends on the sensitivity of the instrument. And the last slide is about uh, HPHT. Uh, sorry, uh, C uh, CVD, additional hydrogen peaks here, not present in this position in natural diamonds. And G1 center. And you can see here a tiny bit of silicon vacancy. This is all CVD. Blue diamonds, uh, very different uh, uh, natural. It has a boron. This is peaks of boron. Uh, natural diamonds, believe it or not, have many of them. If you do sensitive, some of the radiation lines that are usually removed after HPHT treatment. This is boron spectra of, uh, of type 2 diamond. And uh, this is how it looks blue. You can see big difference is that a huge jump here hitting the top of the screen is a lot of boron saturation. This is boron, peak, boron peaks and a little bit of envy center. And uh, this is the last one on synthetic CVD blue. It's also possible to make CVD blue. What is nice about this system? Uh, and this is nice uh, that you, you can cool down the diamond. You can see the difference. If this is a room temperature in, in, in red, you, you kind of cannot separate a silicon vacancy center from G1 center because 737, 741, very close. If you do cool it down, you can clearly see that three peaks here. One silicon vacancy, two related to G1 uh, center. So this is something I want to show you, of course, once you see this, you, you can think if it's 77 or GR1, GR but basically if you cool it down, of course, it's better to invest fifty hundred thousand dollars than than 20 to get better resolution, but all depends what you need and uh, how far you want to go in your identification. So 
uh, the last one is my, my stone. Uh, we borrowed samples to each other and, and uh, changed. So that's why nice collaboration between me and Marge Labs. Uh, this is a my stone. Same thing, G1 center can be separated from uh, silicon vacancy type 2A. You can see here, uh, not only band, this is a lot of structure of GR1. You can visit uh, visible invisible spectra. So a uh, little bit of bright on bright side. Uh, I know we're not traveling for some time. Uh, I'm I'm going tomorrow. I, I will see how it goes, uh, how far I will go. I hope I'll finish my trip in Europe. Uh, when I come back, uh, I will finish my book and uh, then plan my uh, fall and uh, uh, plan my conference, uh, our conference with the George Stramilis. We do this together for five years. We skip last two years. So we're playing for Thessaloniki, but could be uh, other place in Greece because we we canceled the hotel. Uh, we will see where it will be. I just learned recently there's a very nice, nice uh, mineralogical museum opening in Athens and the very nice group of people uh, that I know uh, working on that. So uh, maybe we move to Athens uh, because it's a big cultural center and they have a nice, nice deposits of minerals close to Athens in Lavria. So maybe we, we do a, that trip there as well. I so far plan a, a trip to uh, uh, Kosovo, Serbia, where, where I grew up on, on a Svalret mine and some uh, uh, Opal uh, uh, deposits. When I was a student geologist, I was going to the field around the uh, Pristina airport and collecting opals, believe it or not. And we're also visiting a, a ruby mine in Prilep. Uh, only one deposit uh, is translucent. So this is all planned for next year. Uh, I think May, June, or, or July, uh, we'll decide uh, probably November, December this year. And I will, now, I will, I will show it at the Tucson show. So we have some questions and some chats. And I really appreciate for those who stay to the end. Uh, sorry, I was a few minutes longer, but it's a big topic. Uh, one uh, question from uh, friend Bear Williams. Does X usually show the SCV77PL for CVD grown? Uh, answer is Bear, yes. Uh, X does usually show. In some rare, rare cases, it's very, very weak or none, but I'm using the room temperature. Uh, uh, Miko uh, did a lecture and uh, I hope you saw it, uh, that he has little container that he cooled down the diamond and then use EXA, then you can definitely see better 737 uh, because it's, it's a small peak related to silicon and vacancy uh, uh, trapped due to a growth uh, chamber. So in my experience, uh, majority of the time, I don't know how many percentage I didn't, but maybe 90, maybe more, you can see room temperature, but sometimes you need to uh, cool it down. That's why it's good to back it up always with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, fluorescence and the cross polarized filters, very important. I check every diamond CVD that comes to my laboratory on cross polarized filters, not only to, to prove, but also to educate myself. I learn from each diamond a little bit something. So you, you always look on the cross polarized filters, fluorescence, and X is my three instruments I go, but of course, sometimes I use uh, other for jewelry, uh, for infrared. Another question. Uh, so we have a very nice group of people, actually. Uh, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, we have people from America, from, uh, from Canada, uh, England, uh, uh, South Africa, actually Greece, and even for Saudi Arabia, believe it or not, uh, uh, lately I did some online workshop, uh, uh, private for some uh, new group from Saudi Arabia, and uh, it's possible to do to, to re do private workshop with me uh, online as well. So how much we can rely on a gem pen? Did we can use it in the lab? This is a question from uh, Abdullah. Okay, a gem pen, okay, let me show you how it looks first. So as Wirt say, it's really a pen, but it's a big pen. Why? Because it has, a, I guess, a quite strong uh, light. So comes a container like this. It's very nice design, really. I have to say, uh, who likes uh, fancy things. And it's, uh, so you can charge it uh, with, a com with a computer. And uh, see, this is how easy to put, uh, to put in and out the filters. There is a four filters. Uh, this is number four, for example, is corresponding to uh, to long UV light, but there's a three other filters here. This is a maximum uh, 
maybe three thousand dollars but you can do only two two filters one and four are important for diamonds uh again if you go on website brancogems.com so there's two kind of uh part of websites one is called advanced diamond uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, academy you can see these five free and five uh, fee-based fee lectures if you go to practical webinars they're all for free we did 19 of them and the one on may uh, april 1st was only about gem pen so I, I, I encourage you to download that that uh, uh, one hour uh, one hour uh, uh, presentation and you can see much more than i can tell you now but my experience is quite strong uh, source. Uh, why, uh, for example, one uh, appraiser, uh, one, I can tell his name, uh, Travis Lehman from New York. Uh, he, he has a laboratory, maybe a little bit bigger than mine because of his New York, but uh, relatively small lab. He likes it because you can do on the jewelry. Imagine this is a necklace. You can quickly do each stone ta -ta 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 fast. It's reliable because it's a strong source. Uh, and uh, what is nice now, they have they made something extra. What I like, actually, I told them uh, that is not something that I advise people who make instruments who are who are supporting me or who are part of education. Uh, uh, so they make very nice uh, uh, called the uh, dark room. Uh, so how it looks is like this. So instead of uh, because if you do it in a, in a regular environment, you, you cannot see very well. So what, what they make, see a dark room, you can make a pictures and you, you put your diamond uh, on the little, uh, on the little uh, stage on the side. And even if you put rings, you see, you can rotate the rings, but again, it's one, two items at a time. It's not from mass production of jewelry, but uh, if you do one, two, three items at a time, you have a little uh, tray like this, I'll show you for loose diamonds. You can put a tray, few stones, 10, five stones. You can, you can scroll it like this and, and look at the look at the diamonds under the view a few of them this is a again uh, those who likes nice design and it's a powerful uh, source uh, uh, i show it in my slide uh, a little bit stronger so if you look at the book uh, it will come in september i put a difference between uh, pet gem pen and uh, regular regular uv light it's a little bit stronger a little more expensive of course so this is what you get uh, Okay, so I have some things in a chat uh, as well. Let me see. Okay, yes. So thank you for 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 telling. It was extremely helpful for you, uh, people from England, and uh, very informative info. Uh, a, a question uh, from JQ. Uh, I don't know exactly who that person, but JQ. Uh, maybe nos in pink diamonds uh, 575 and 637 is is or reference picks in pink diamonds 575 and 67 are called nv0 i mean uh, no charge and nv minus what has been negative charge uh, 637 is negative these are a uh, strong strong indication or proof that diamond is is treated uh, they're present in both natural treated diamonds and synthetic treated why because they're using similar uh, 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 technology, uh, not time to explain everything now, but basically uh, they use uh, irradiation and heat uh, two steps uh, to create this color. Uh, in a multi-step natural diamonds, they even use three steps. And this is a uh, Victor Vince, a Russian scientist who was my guest uh, and his co-author of the book. He, he talks about 15 pages on uh, treatments of diamonds in his book. He, he, he'll show you colors and everything. He invented this uh, uh, technology. He basically, change type of diamond it's possible to start a diamond with a four nitrogen atoms or two break it imagine this is a couple and they divorce this is single nitrogen become now uh, once you have single nitrogen diamond uh, 1b at least part of it uh, 1b plus 1a you can use a uh, first step hpht second step uh, irradiation and heat you can make this multi-step treated diamonds in my experience uh, i've seen only few natural diamonds that have 637 uh, defect when I was working in New York, uh, uh, had, of course, uh, New York is a diamond center, uh, better quality uh, diamonds. I see a few from Golconda, uh, India. Unfortunately, these stones are usually in collection of museums. That's why those who want to study uh, this old collection, they have to go to museum. I was in the Museum of Vienna, for example, 
Uh, I, I've seen Golconda, but they couldn't give it to me for study, unfortunately. Uh, Thomas did a study of Vienna collection and the uh, British Museum. And uh, hopefully in the future, I'll be able to uh, do uh, something in this direction, but it all depends on the time. Okay, so this is a nice question. Thank you uh, for asking. And um, I think uh, this is uh, for now about that. Uh, and I think we are also up to our time. I see one hour and a half. Uh, I'm trying to be uh, also courteous, not to give you too much or not to overwhelm you with information. So yes, we're just over exactly one hour and a half now. So what I can tell you, uh, I'm sure those who came a few times uh, to listen to me uh, and my colleagues are maybe a little bit tired of us because we are coming every every two weeks for three months. Uh, but I'm sure you'll learn a lot. And uh, there is a book, uh, sorry, there's a Facebook uh, page uh, uh, called uh, Branco Gems Advanced Academy. This is a way for us to communicate. And five, six, or maybe even 10 of you, no, 10 of you that you're here today are member of this. But we have around 25 very, very small close groups. Whoever comes today, or, or, and I, I consider you as, as, as a circle. Just send me the email you want to be part of this uh, Facebook group. And me and my colleague, uh, my, uh, Karina Tucci, she's from Australia, she's instructor, a good relation. I go to Australia every year, every second year to teach. They're very uh, knowledgeable people there and I teach in three, four cities. So we're doing this Facebook and we are put, posting there uh, certain uh, questions and you can ask questions. Uh, I know uh, uh, Kaleen from South Africa asks questions there very nicely and we try to answer and help each other. This is way how to we can um, create this uh, online uh, small group to help each other. We cannot solve everything uh, online. Of course, uh, we have to see uh, samples and do it our own test because each instrument is different. Uh, but for example, X, X, OK, is the same. But visible spectrometer, there's so many different models, so different uh, sensitivity, infrared. So uh, different, different if you send me a spectra, if I do my own spectra. So uh, anyway. This is what you can do uh, to stay in touch. Uh, I'll be out most of July. I'll be back beginning of August. Um, then I will uh, continue. Uh, hopefully, uh, you see me again at some uh, online uh, events. Uh, I'll try to finish my book first and then go to different projects because uh, sometimes it's too much even for me to do on three different levels, uh, uh, different uh, projects. So thank you for coming. Uh, we will record this for those who, who missed some part or, or uh, it be available to download uh, for free maybe in a few days uh, from now i appreciate you coming and uh, hope to see you, some of you at least at the next conference in greece uh, we'll announce uh, things uh, uh, end of uh, the year and in tucson show i'll be there uh, handing out flyers so if you see me or you will get my newsletter starting september so whoever comes uh, today it will be on automatically on that uh, newsletter that will inform you what's happening in september october and uh, next year Thank you and uh, stay in good health and hope to see you uh, in a few weeks. Bye bye.